just order a case of MSG off Amazon Prime. Yeah, just go in and just spray it all over the things just you own. Just sprinkle it on everything. God, that'd be great. So, reboots. Yeah, reboots. Thief 4. Thief not four. Thief 4, it's Thief. Yeah, they're not putting the four, four out. there, it's just they, Thief. They took, out, they took out the 4, they took out the... Uh, Supernatural things. Which so is okay. Oh, so Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider Nine. Week. Was Hitman? It? Was Hitman? Uh, no. Was it? No, that was not a reboot. That was a sequel. It actually had narrative connections to Blood Money. Yeah. Well, what is a reboot though? That brings up a good question. Is it a That's graphics a good overhaul question, or something Tara. else? Thank you, Max. Uh, I think I think with a reboot, you're generally kind of uh, cherry picking the elements that you like. And throwing those in, it can be a, it can be a massive overhaul completely. To your point about you know, is it when you do the graphics overhaul? I don't think this standard applies now. But I remember when I started out, actually giving a new number to a game was significant because that meant it had a new engine, it had right. new tech, and that everything that didn't have that was just kind of a you know a new subtitle, like right. you know like forgiveness of. Retribution. Methodologies. Yeah. I, I really, I really wish that we could go back to the number system denoting a new game, and if they and save all the, you know, colon, ascension, judgment, retribution, revelations, that yeah. kind of stuff. Because it's tough save. to keep track. It save is, that but, for the DLC. Save that for the expansion packs. But you know, they they still use that though to to no, denote what is a sequel and what isn't because they have Assassin's Creed Infamous, Four, but Second then they also Son, have Assassin's Zone, Creed Brother Shadow Fall. See now, I still think that and I might be wrong that the Assassin's Creed is still consistent. That they, you know, they they changed the engine for two. Eh, they may not have changed it that much. I know they seem to be doing with Assassin's Creed that you get a new number with a new character. That's why it's going yeah. from Connor in three to Roger Daltrey in, yeah. uh, in, 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 in in number four. He kind of looks like him. He's got the pirate. I guy. noticed blonde hair with big locks because I used to go like this. Once what was that time. like for you? When did you <laughs> reboot your hair? <laughs> I rebooted it um, all of about a year ago. You know, I just kind of you had a gritty reboot. I had a well, it wasn't well. It was it was it was a desperate reboot. The way I looked at it is that it was time to take the plastic off the cushions mm. because she ain't coming back. And you I know, I think that's a uh, I think that's a smart decision to make. Yeah. But I'm really, I'm really sad that you just said those se that sentence. But yeah, you're, let's go back to video games. And let's go back to video games. games, and yeah, this I has mean, been a week of mortality for me. So um, yeah, what are I, some reboots that have worked? Like what's? Uh, well, I think Tomb Raider worked pretty successfully. I mean, that franchise saw so much fatigue near the end. Um, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat was, that was, was a good a one. Huge. That, that huge yeah. Yeah. reboot. Uh, Fallout Three, which some people will still argue that the original games were better, but I personally yeah. prefer. It's, Kind of apples and oranges. It is really yeah, apples yeah. and oranges in that I mean, case. But well, that is a good that is a good example of a legitimately good reboot. Yeah. Um, but I mean, with Fall Three being an exception, I, I tend to look at a reboot as you're wiping the cannon. You're starting over fresh. Tomb Raider yeah. definitely did that, mm -hmm. but you're trying to hold on to those essential elements that would still right. justify naming it in that franchise. Right. The thing that, that happens, because this is video games and this is software and the technology is constantly being improved upon, can you really even have a true true reboot or is it always just kind of uh, sort of an improvement? Like, you know, with, with movies, you know, it's like there still are technological advances, but, you know, they're like, okay, those other Batman movies were, were too big and silly, we're gonna scale this back, whereas now it's like, okay, this new one is gonna be uh, more technologically advanced, but stylistically it's gonna be uh, you know, trimmed right. down, scaled back. I, I feel like technology actually has very little to do with it. I feel like it's more an overhaul of the mechanics, an overhaul of the story, and for Tomb Raider, I mean, obviously the new game looks different because it is built on a different engine, but it also just has a different, like the world has a different feel around it, you know? I think... What it, I was thinking it'd be funny if in this in the next one, if they explain what happened to make her her boobs bigger, like if she just got stung by a bunch of bees, they just yeah. came and they just stung her in the boobs and they just got all big and she. Back in the old days, she that was augmentation and just find yeah. an epipen. Yeah. Actually, I thought it'd be really <laughs> funny if in if in the second one she gets cursed by a, by an evil witch or something for raiding a tomb and they just turn her into polygons and she's like, Oh no, I wrote a craft. I'm made out of. 16 shapes. So you what know. you're saying is you should never be a video game developer? That's exactly what I'm getting at here. That's good. What are some reboots I mean, we'd like to see? What are some ones that could use a do of them? Oh, jeez. I mean, there's... You know what, there's one, and they tried to reboot it. I don't think... 
any of the original games were good, but in concept, I really liked them, and it was the Turok franchise. I'm with you there. I like Turok 2 you... in concept because it was this weird world with lizard people. I actually prefer it without straight up dinosaurs. And that How do with... you fuck up a game where you hunt dinosaurs? How do you fuck that up? Well, well, th well th think about dragons in games. There was no good dragon game until Skyrim. I mean, remember Lair? Yeah. You're right in dragons attacking people. That's kind of like, you, you science sealed and delivered. That's a good point. But then you throw in a six yeah. axis and you know things go higgledy piggledy. I, I feel like there's also a correlation between the amount of time between the last game in a series and the reboot, which also factors in a lot. Like you have all this added pressure. Think about Duke Nukem. That's yeah. technically a reboot. Uh, nah, no, that was nah. that was no, that nah. was the recalibration of existing content to finally get a game out. God, it looks so different than assume, the previous ones. Though. Assume, well, that's because it, it took looked, twelve years to make yeah. Terra. That is an engine. I think they went through three different engines. Unreal was one of them for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But I think the next Duke Nukem will easily be a reboot. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to see a. a I'd love to see a Duke Nukem reboot where it's just a. I mean, it would be sort of a, a parody of the characters. It'd be a parody of video games as a whole. I think it'd be fun to, to kind of deal with Duke Nukem in kind of the real world with the, with the social norms we have now, and he's kind of this whole. Yeah, everyone's like, "What's like, wrong with you?" Action icon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's basically just a giant fourteen-year-old. Mm -hmm. I picked up the poop and I threw it at some shit. <laughs> Imagine Fuck all hotline. my farts, I'm Duke Nukem. Imagine a Hotline Miami Duke Nukem crossover. <laughs> that sounds amazing. That sounds really good, actually. <laughs> Okay, another game Hail I love. to my dick, I farted on all the poops. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, he just has, just like cartoon Tourette's, and everyone's like, I'm so glad we don't tape these things, because, I mean, yeah. I I've said this a million times, I want to see a Kid Chameleon reboot. Oh, that'd be cool. I think, I mean, essentially, Assassin's Creed is a Kid Chameleon reboot. Mm -hmm. You know, you're this, like, shitty little guy who nobody likes, and they're like, hey! You've got to get in this virtual reality arcade machine and go back in time and put on different hats. And then you, but it was in, instead of an arcade, it was an animus. And instead of different hats, it was ancestors through DNA. And it's like, don't explain it. Just have me putting on different hats and getting powers. That's all I want. You know what I want to see a reboot of? And this is going to be probably an opinion that nobody shares. The Incredible Machine. Did anyone play that? I know that game. That was like one of my first computer games and it was, all like logic and you have to arrange things. It's all, the whole game is like a Rube, Gold, Rube Goldberg machine, basically. That would be rad. And I don't know, they might have made sequels to the game, I don't know, I only played the first one, but it was The Incredible an, Machine? The Incredible, the, the Incrediblest Machine. The Incrediblest. <laughs> It'd be great to see um, uh, the Little Big Planet guys do that. Yeah, that just, would be amazing. Just create this virtual Ooh. space where everything yeah. reacts physically, but you know you don't have the logistics of actually trying because to. Because at the end of the day, that's what I think is the most fun about a game. Why, why I was so into it when I was a kid, really young. It's just the cause and effect. There's something inherently neat about hitting the button and it's somehow represented up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's and I think it all comes back with, to a Rube Goldberg puzzle. Just, yeah, just with, setting up the dominoes. That's why we're here. Yeah. Because we like things that do things to other things. Instant yes. satisfaction. So modern reboots. Obviously, we have Thief coming, which makes mm. me very excited. Sim City is technically a reboot, I think. No, oh, yeah, they took away the numbers. City. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Yeah. Y you know it's a reboot when they just call it Sim City, Thief, mm. Tomb Raider. I guess you're right. That's I guess that word. is the naming nomenclature yeah. for this sort of thing. Uh, what do I want to see? What's a good one? I'd like one. I'd love to see Metal Gear get rebooted. I'd love to see that happen. I know that everyone would hate me for saying that, but I'd like to see a game that's just a game based on Escape from New York on the Fox Engine. I think that would be pretty cool. It'd be a game where you're Kurt Russell and you're just stealthing around. You know, you just also pointed out that it's just a little strange that that license hasn't been used. An Escape from New York game that I, that hmm. could work as a game. Like, like the way you, you're you're in a pretty constrained environment, you, you're yeah yeah copyright. I just copyrighted that idea. Yeah, yeah. It's verbal by Nick. So can can can, can you think of anything else that you want to reboot? Um, this entire conversation. Yeah, yeah. If we can I do can it all for over like again. A dark and gritty version of it, where you have like eyeliner on or something. You know what? Uh, I'm reimagining it right now. <gasps> Really I'm experiencing Zack Snyder's it directing all it. over again for the first time. Oh, it's visionary. It's 